if you have ever tried to lose some extra weight, you know what an easy and nice job it is not. Everyone who has ever tried losing five pounds knows that it requires a big amount of willpower, healthy diet, and exercise. Losing weight does not come easy. Those before and after pictures make it look like it is a piece of cake. But cake actually is something you should not have when you are trying to lose those extra post-pandemic pounds. Something very similar can be said about learning a foreign language. Unfortunately, there is no magic pill that will make you speak fluent Polish or Spanish the morning after. To learn another language, you need a big amount of willpower, exercise, memorizing, and practice. You see, no matter what TV commercials tell us, there are no easy solutions to weight loss or to learning foreign languages. If you want to achieve something important in your life, like losing 10 or 20 pounds, or finally mastering that French before you go to Paris, you have to make some effort. It takes a lot of sweat and hard work to achieve your goal. And this is why I am so disappointed by the editors who cut and pasted fragments of today's first reading from the book of Jonah. Now, the story of the prophet Jonah is one of the most fascinating and colorful stories in the Hebrew scriptures. Unfortunately, people who redacted our Catholic lectionary gave us only a short sampling of the story of that great prophet. Today's first reading from the book of Jonah says, the word of God came to Jonah saying, go out to the city of Nineveh and tell them that they have to change the way they live their lives if they don't want to experience the wrath of God. And the next sentence has Jonah arriving in the city of Nineveh and convincing everyone very easily to change their old ways and live as just and fair people. This edition of the first reading makes it look like Jonah just took one magic pill and here we have a happy end. As a matter of fact, the book of Jonah has a few more chapters between that first calling of God and the happy end that we heard about in today's first reading. The story goes like that, the full story. Jonah lived in Israel or Palestine, and God called him, like the reading says, to preach the message of God, the message of just and mercy to the people of Nineveh. God invited Jonah to go to a far away place in Nineveh, which is located in today's Iraq, and convince the citizens of that city 
to change their selfish lifestyles and mirror the message of God. Now, the first reaction of Jana was, thank you, but no thanks, maybe another time. And instead of going east to Nineveh, Jonah bought a ticket on a cruise ship and decided to take an excursion to Tarshish, which is west, the very opposite direction of Nineveh. Now, to those of you who are geography freaks, Tarshish most probably was located to what is known today as the Rock of Gibraltar at the very end of the Mediterranean Sea, at the opposite end from where Israel was and is located. So Jana decided to ignore or even escape from the calling of God. He is on that cruise traveling happily to the western edge of the known world where God decides to mess up his plans. A big dangerous storm happens to take place as Jonah is traveling west. The sailors who did not believe in God Yahweh argue among themselves what did we do to so anger the gods of the seas? One of us must have done something that angered the gods that they are punishing us with this very dangerous storm. At that point, Jonah quietly raises his hand and says, Hey guys, it could be me. It's quite possible that I am at fault for this situation. You see, God called me to do something and I decided to go in the opposite direction. The sailors, once they figured out whose fault their dangerous and perilous situation is, decided to throw Jonah out of the ship. It just happens that a big fish was swimming by and Jonah ends up being eaten or swallowed by that big fish. For the next three days, Jonah has a small retreat, a time to reflect, to pray and ask himself important questions as he's being digested by the big fish. He decides that if he survives this terrible adventure, he will do what God asked him to do. After three days, the fish spits up or vomits Jonah on a sandy beach and finally Jonah says yes God I will answer your call I will do the hard work I will go to Nineveh and will tell them what you want me to tell them that's how we arrive at today's happy end after many dangerous adventures Jana finally is putting the work into this calling. Jana is sweating, is losing his voice, is doing what God asked him to do. And truly, the citizens of Nineveh, Bible says, heed the call of Jana. They recognize they, that, that they cannot live selfish self-centered lives anymore and they repent and God changes God's mind. This beautiful story of Jonah, which is one of the 
ancient Middle Eastern legends tells us that happy ends do come, that there will be a happy end in your life as well if you put hard work, if you are disciplined, if you put some sweat into the process, you too may achieve your happy end. Our life of faith, our spiritual journey is not unlike losing some extra pounds or learning another language. Our life of faith, our calling to be the person of faith requires a big amount of self-discipline, of exercise, studying, and then practicing what we claim to believe. There is no magic pill that will make you a good Christian with beautiful spiritual six-pack in just a day or two. If you want to be the follower of Christ, if you want to achieve a happy ending of your life, you need to practice, you need to exercise, you need to pray, to study scriptures, to meditate, to share your faith with others, to put what you practice into real life sweat and tears and exercises. This, my friends, is the only way to lose extra pounds, to learn another language, and to be a person of faith. If, like Jonah, you want to finally achieve the purpose of your spiritual life, if you want to experience the happy end, that we all pray for, it requires of each of one of us hard work, dedication, and daily spiritual exercise. Now, I admit that I don't expect ever to have a nice six-pack on my biological body, but I am hoping that I and all of you will be in the best spiritual shape of our lives when we meet God face to face. Amen.